Welcome to today's lecture. Um, just recall that in the previous lecture, we had been looking at the properties of uh, functions, um, how to optimize uh, functions, looking at the maxima, minima, absolute maxima, absolute minima and how the tools uh, of calculus namely properties of the derivative help us to uh, look at the points what are called critical points and analyze them for to be the point of maxima or minima. We had started looking at some examples in, uh, uh, in a economics scenario, uh, some models in economics and we had come to a, a, a we had derived a relation namely um, that um, at a point of maximum, so if K0 is a point of maximum, then the marginal of revenue at that point is equal to marginal of the cost at that price. Uh, at that Q0, the demand or production. And similarly, the marginal of the average cost at that point is equal to mar ma marginal of the total cost. Uh, this is same as a marginal of the cost. Sometime it is written as marginal of cost, sometime it is written as marginal of total cost depending on what is given. So, these two relations we had uh, developed um, and reduced using calculus tools in our uh, previous lecture. But uh, we would like to give a caution today that uh, care should be taken to claim that say for example, the uh, derivative of the uh, uh, profit that is the marginal of the profit is equal to marginal of the cost at a maximizing price say Q0. Uh, before one uh, uh, decides about verifying such a relation that such a relation is true, one should ensure that Q0 is indeed a uh, point of uh, maxima for the function, otherwise this may not be true. So, let us uh, look at an example to <coughs> caution you about this concept that consider a firm with cost function C is equal to 30 Q and let us assume that the price of this quantity is fixed the, in the market the price is fixed of the product that is being manufactured and sold. This in an economic scenario is normally called as the competitive market. The price is not changed. Uh, okay. uh, if the price is fixed say at P equal to 50, then the cost uh, and the profit will be given as follows. Then the profit function the total revenue is equal to P into Q. So, that is equal to 50 Q. So, that is the total revenue. So, the profit total revenue minus the total cost. So, profit will be 50 Q minus 30 Q that is 20 Q. So, that is the profit function. So, uh, if you look at the derivative of this that will be equal to 20. Uh, so, marginal of the revenue is equal to 20 whereas, the marginal of the cost C is equal to 30 Q. So, marginal of the cost is equal to 30. So, 20 is obviously not equal to 30. So, at no value of Q, uh, the, uh, the quantity being produced, uh, the marginal of uh, the profit will be equal to the marginal of uh, the cost. Why is that happening? Uh, what is the reason for that? Why uh, the reason could only be that the, there is no point, there is no uh, value of Q for which there is a maximum. So, let us uh, ascertain that. So, uh, so, what is wrong is that if we look at the derivative that is equal to 20 that is positive. So, that means what? Our calculus uh, results say that when the derivative of a function is uh, positive, the function must be strictly increasing. So, this means that the profit function which is equal to 20 Q is a strictly increasing function. So, it will not have any uh, maximum value at all because for a, so, it looks like that the more number of uh, if you increase the production, the profit should increase. Of course, this uh, profit cannot increase indefinitely. So, th there is no maximum, no maxima for the profit function as such mathematically, but in the reality uh, profit cannot keep on increasing indefinitely. So, this is not a, a very good uh, model of economics for uh, in the competitive market. So, the point of uh, caution was that this uh, equality that the marginal of uh, production not equal to the marginal of the cost fails because at no point 
uh, at no value of q uh, the profit function is maximum. So, there is no wonder that this relation is not true. So, what we are saying is if q0 is a point of uh, maximum then this relation holds. So, if there is no point of maximum then the relation need not hold. So, let us look at another example which is normally called the monopoly market. So, let us consider a monopoly firm with demand and price being given by P into Q is equal to 10. So, P is the price, Q is the quantity produced and that is equal to 10 and the cost function is equal to 5 Q. So, in this uh, scenario we would like to analyze uh, what is the profit, uh, so what is the price and demand relation P Q was equal to 10. So, P as a function of Q we can write as P equal to we divide by Q on both sides. So, we get P is equal to 10 into Q raised to power minus 1. You can also write as 10 by Q if you like. Of course, Q is always going to be positive. And what will be the revenue function? The revenue function is P into Q the quantity is produced into the price function. So, P into Q. So, P is equal to 10 Q to the power minus 1 and uh, Q is itself. So, this power balance is out. So, you get equal to 10. So, revenue is always equal to 10. And uh, the profit function um, pi Q is revenue minus the cost. So, revenue is equal to 10 and the cost is 5 Q. So, 10 minus 5 Q. So, using this given data we have written down all the uh, functional relationships uh, of P as a function of Q the total revenue or the revenue as a function of Q and the profit as a uh, function of Q. So, graphically uh, this means uh, P will be equal to 10 Q to the minus 1 and M C uh, marginal of uh, consumption. So, here is the marginal, uh, here is the consumption function oh, sorry uh, uh, cost function C Q. So, marginal of cost from here looking at the derivative will be equal to 5. So, marginal of uh, cost is 5 and the product function uh, price is equal to 10 q to the minus 1 and the graph of these two functions is given as follows. So, 10 to the power uh, 10 into q to the power minus 1 is this blue graph and uh, m marginal of cost is equal to 5. So, that is going to be a, a straight line it is a constant function. Uh, this function uh, p equal to 10 q minus 1 is really a interesting function in the sense that as uh, here q is in the denominator. So, as q comes to closer and closer to 0 the value of p is going to uh, increase. So, uh, it looks like that uh, uh, output if we reduce the output. So, q is the output. So, if we reduce the output as per this relation uh, the price must rise right. So, as you reduce the price goes up is rises, but here the revenue function is equal to 10. So, revenue remains constant, the price is increasing, but the revenue remains unchanged. So, it may look like that one should reduce uh, the production to uh, increase the price, um, but uh, in reality this cannot be done because the price cannot be um, because Q uh, the quantity produced cannot be made equal to 0. So, this is a, a kind of scenario which is also not very uh, advisable. Also let us note that uh, the profit function which was given by uh, uh, the revenue function minus the cost function 10 minus q uh, that implies that the marginal of uh, the uh, profit is equal to minus 5. So, that means what the negative derivative is negative that means, the profit is actually a strictly decreasing function. So, uh, even when you reduce the price will go up, but your uh, profit will be a strictly decreasing function. So, here is the scenario. So, marginal we can draw, uh, draw all the curves. This is the cost function C q equal to 5 q the red line. The marginal of the revenue. So, revenue was equal to uh, 10 <coughs> revenue was equal to 10 q. So, this is the uh, marginal of the revenue and the profit. Uh, so, M C uh, marginal of the cost is equal to 5 
and marginal of the revenue is equal to 10. So, these are uh, not going to be really ever equal, never going to be equal, right. Okay. So, this is a graphical way of saying the same, all the things that we wanted to say. Okay. So, let us calculate in this scenario, uh, let us calculate the coefficient of demand for this uh, economic model. So, recall coefficient of demand at a point Q was defined as the derivative of Q with respect to P into P by Q. So, if we put the values derivative of Q with respect to P is minus 10 p to the power minus 2, right. So, uh, that is coming from the fact that p is equal to 10 into uh, p raised to power minus 1. So, derivative of 10 into p raised to power minus 1 will be minus 1 power will come down 10 into p raised to power minus 1 minus 1. So, that is minus 2. So, this is uh, the coefficient of elasticity uh, dp by dq into p by q. So, p divided by q, q is also put in terms of p, it is 10 p to the power minus 1. So, this is equal to 1. So, everything cancels, p raised to power minus 1 goes up, 10 cancels, negative cancels. So, it's a, so this model is a model of coefficient of elasticity is constant and is unit. So, it is a unit elasticity model uh, for uh, this model has unit elasticity of demand. Uh, let us uh, look at uh, another uh, variation of uh, this uh, scenario. Let us change uh, our uh, demand price relationship from P q equal to 10 to P q square equal to 1. And the cost function is C q equal to 2 times q. So, let us write down all the functions, uh, relevant functions in this model. So, we have P is equal to uh, when you divide by q square, p is equal to q into q raised to power minus 2, 1 over q square. So, that is p equal to q raised to power minus 2. What is the, uh, uh, what is the income? Okay. Uh, revenue function. So, revenue function is equal to p into q. So, value of p is q square. So, put the value of uh, q square uh, into uh, q raised to power minus 2 into 2. Uh, here is, uh, uh, here is a, a problem. So, that is p raised to power uh, minus 2. So, it is p into q. So, this should be uh, corrected. So, p into q means p into q raised to power minus 2. So, uh, this uh, needs a correction. Um, so, we will just stop here and uh, make the correction. We had looked at some examples of uh, how uh, maxima, minima and uh, relations between marginals uh, are deduced. Uh, let us now just look at uh, dedu uh, deduction of general formulas uh, for various uh, things. So, let us look at a relation between the revenue and uh, the elasticity of uh, economic model. So, let us consider a firm with inverse demand function uh, P equal to P is a, the price which is a function of Q. So, P is a function of Q given by P equal to P Q. So, uh, and so the revenue of uh, such a model will be given by uh, P Q into Q that is the uh, revenue because price into the quantity uh, produced or the product produced. So, P the function of Q P as a function of Q into Q. So, the marginal of revenue from here we can reduce what is the marginal of revenue. So, we differentiate both sides of the equation and find out the marginal of revenue. So, derivative of uh, R prime, R prime being the derivative is equal to here is the product rule. So, that will give you uh, P times the derivative <coughs> of Q and derivative of Q is 1. So, that it is only P plus derivative q into derivative of the first function. So, q into dp by dq. Now, this value can be put in the uh, coefficient of elasticity of demand. So, we know by definition the coefficient of elasticity of demand was equal to p by q into the derivative dq by uh, dp. So, let us uh, put these values uh, from the given uh, data. 
So, here we have got dp by dq. So, from here uh, we knew, know that p and q are uh, inverse from p even find out the value of q. <coughs> so, they are interchangeable as dependent functional relationships. So, derivative of dq by dp also can be found out and so derivative dq by dp is my 1 over the derivative of dp by dq. So, that we had seen in the notion of differentiation. So, let us use that and put the value. So, um, r prime q was given by this relation. So, p plus q, so we take out p common here. So, that is 1 plus q by p into dp by dq and that inside the bracket is precisely 1 over of uh, the coefficient of elasticity epsilon. So, uh, this value can be put here by taking p out common here and using the fact by fact that uh, dq by dp uh, is equal to 1 over dp by dq from the inverse of uh, derivative of the inverse function relationship. So, r prime q, so r prime q is normally written as uh, the marginal of revenue. So, as a consequence we get that the marginal of revenue or r prime q is equal to this. So, from here we can reduce the uh, consequences namely if the coefficient of elasticity is less than 1 right if this quantity is less than 1 then uh, this quantity will be uh, negative. Okay. So, r prime q will be a negative quantity. So, uh, that means when uh, and we are remember we had called uh, the coefficient of elasticity less than 1 demand being uh, inelastic. So, demand being uh, inelastic increases the output or decreases the price uh, and hence output reduce uh, reduces the revenue. So, that means r prime q <coughs> the negative means what that means uh, the demand uh, is inelastic. So, that means increase in output will decrease in price the revenue will uh, decrease the revenue will decrease right. So, r prime q less than 0 means r q is a decreasing uh, function. So, epsilon d less than 1 will imply that revenue will decrease. So, if it is bigger than 1 then r uh, dash q the derivative is positive which also can be written as a marginal of q is positive. <coughs> so, that means demand is uh, very elastic in that case and the increase in output. So, if you increase the output then uh, uh, the revenue should uh, increase because r prime q is positive that means r q is a increasing function. So, as q increases r q will increase. So, this is a <coughs> relation between the elasticity of demand and uh, the revenue uh, that we get from the using derivative. So, further the output q 0 at which point uh, it is maximized. So, supposing at a point this is maximized that means uh, r prime q at that point will be equal to 0. So, that will give us uh, implying that the revenue is maximized at a point of demand curve where epsilon d q is equal to 1. So, for this to be equal to 0 this epsilon should, uh, coefficient of elasticity should be equal to 1. So, when the point the price the uh, value of q where epsilon d coefficient of elasticity is equal to 1 the revenue will be maximized. So, that is the output that will maximize the revenue that is another consequence of this. So, further we uh, from here we know that uh, marginal of revenue at q 0 is equal to marginal of uh, cost at q 0. Uh, so, thus that also gives that uh, marginal of revenue is this. So, uh, remember that we have proved already. So, if we want to say that r prime q is positive that is same as the marginal of revenue is uh, positive. So, that is same as m c q is equal to positive. So, the marginal of uh, <coughs> the cost function if it is positive the that means what that means there will always be uh, the firm will always be in equilibrium at a point where the demand curve uh, point on the demand curve where epsilon d becomes uh, bigger than 1 right. So, uh, actually equal to 1 from here right. So, that is uh, another consequence of this right. So, let us uh, summarize what we have done uh, today is looked at some of the examples 
and the relations between various economic scenarios, uh, relations uh, between the various uh, quantities like. Mm, uh, first of all, we looked at the caution that namely, um, you should ascertain that there is a point of uh, uh, maxima for uh, profit function uh, uh, or the revenue function to say that the marginal of revenue will be equal to marginal of uh, co uh, cost um, uh, at that point. So, that was our starting point and then we looked at the relation between elasticity and the revenue. So, we will continue this uh, analysis in the next lecture. Thank you.